Morning, everyone. In the foyer, in the kitchen, upstairs, downstairs, in the front, in the back. Oh. So, morning, everyone. How are you guys doing? Have you guys had a great weekend? Um, yeah. Uh, can I call on the worship team? Yes, yes, yes. Hey, bro, listen, bro. You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys are just... <laughs> ah. Yeah. Worship team, over to you. Guys, let's join in worship. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Should I ask you to stand with us, please? Can I ask you to, to look at your neighbor and say, well done for making it today. Well done. Yes. We'd like to thank God. On Monday, I was thinking about Monday with that strike. Oh, the look, what, 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 what the shutdown. People were so like, oh, it went so peacefully. So, but the truth is, it's because the church prayed. It's because as, as the children of God, we stood together and we prayed. It's not because they were so calm, spirited on Monday, but it's because God heard us. Amen. He heard us. So today we're saying thank you for being with us. Thank you, Lord, for walking with us. Thank you for, for, for peace in our country, even on that uh, shutdown. So we're going to say, we're going to sing the song, Wahamba Nati, you walked with us. Hallelujah. And let us worship him. Oh, wafamba nesu, 
Oh, no. 
Jesus, we love you. Yes, we do. We love you. Yes, we do. Um, can we just, can I ask for, for someone uh, just to pray for the worship team? If we can join together as a church right now and just just pray over the worship team. Pray, pray that God opens up our hearts. That God, that God opens up the doors for worship to be cultivated, for us to be to be led into worship in the times we're going through, in the season we're going through. Let the worshipers be going first through the gates. If there's anyone who would like to, to pray for the worship team, um, I'll ask if you can come to the mic. worship and I just thank you for our worship team and I pray Lord Jesus that you would move upon their hearts more and more to just open up and draw us all into the worship that blesses you and and pleases your name Lord you you are a mighty God Jesus worthy worthy of our worship and praise and thanksgiving forever. So, Lord, I pray that you move upon our worship team, that you grow them, that you open their eyes to see more and more in you, of you and your loveliness and your beauty. And so, Lord, I pray blessing on our worship team now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you very much, worship team. Thank you, Anne. Um, again, Anne. <laughs> again, I just want to, whoever wrote these prayer requests, I only found them last Sunday in the, in the prayer box. They're all anonymous apart from one. But I just want to encourage you and say that God hears your prayers. In Psalm 69, it's 65, it says, O oh God, who hears prayer to you, all men will come. So know that your, the heartfelt cries of your heart on these written notes, God hears and will bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Hi, everyone. My name is Judah, for those of you who don't know me. Um, yeah, I'm part of the crew at the back there. And uh, yeah, if, if we don't know each other, I'd love to meet you after the service. Um, yeah, yeah, just, just on, on the worship, um, the scripture came to me that um, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few, you know, and, and I just pray that scripture, that God will, will give us workers within the worship team um, and everything we're doing, you know, just to be a team to be united in everything we're doing. I um, just wanted to share this scripture before I, I share some uh, announcements with you. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 10. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Um, that came up on my daily reading today and yeah, I just felt, I felt God saying, in everything I do, in whatever efforts I try with, with, with my weaknesses, with tough times or facing persecution, it's not about me winning the battle because I can't. You know, it's all, it's all, it's all in God's hands. So all I can do is show up. So I encourage, I encourage us all to show up. Show up to whatever God is calling us to, to whatever challenges we might face. Um, yeah, yeah. Some announcements. Ooh, sorry, I'm seeing KG's pictures here. Um, next week we'll be breaking bread. So um, 
yeah, just come expectant. It's always a good time to, to be a family, break bread, and just appreciate what Jesus has done for us. Tim and Ingrid will be sharing on the 2nd of April. Um, looking forward to that. I saw them yesterday. Very cheerful, very cheerful couple. Um, so, yeah, let's get excited. Africa Club next week from the 30th to, and um, on the 30th, from 6 to 8 p.m., he'll be here uh, unpacking the question, should a Christian consult the dead? I think it's an interesting topic. Um, it may not be for you as an individual, but to learn and also just in furthering the kingdom, it's always good to, to learn about these things and, and seek God and seek counsel from it. And then on the 31st, his book launch will be happening here from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then, yeah, his book is called Turning from God to Diviners and Fortune Tellers. So, yeah, um, packed week ahead next week. Let's get excited. Uh, Zaloni, can I ask you to, to come up? Oh, yes, yes. Sorry, I almost forgot. Um... We've been talking over the weeks about um, the, the interns, and they've been around, they are around currently. If you look around, you'll see one of them here and there. But can we just as a church pray for the interns? You know, um, they're all in different departments. I think we can have a time where we have them here and we pray for all of them. But as, as of right now, some are in the kid zone, some are on the media at the back there on the cameras. But, yeah, God really is doing something new, and it's exciting having the interns around. But if I can ask someone, can I offer, if someone can pray for the interns, um, just for God to, to bless this journey and in everything we're doing, um, yeah, to serve, to serve. Thank you, Janet. Hi. I've, I've had the privilege of, of meeting with the interns a couple of times, and they're a great bunch of young people. And we're hoping to do Alpha with them next term, so you can pray for that as well. Um, so, Lord Jesus, I just pray for these young people. And we pray that by coming here and learning new skills and learning, new, learning more about you and seeing people in this church walk with you, that they, their lives might be turned around and they might become strong believers and people who will walk out and affect the world for you. So we just pray for these interns. We pray for KG, who's leading them, and for all the others that have, are inputting into their program. We just commit it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Oh, yes. Um, can we please pass, pass the baskets around? Uh, and uh, yeah, can we pray for you, Zulani? Lord, as we come before you, open up our hearts as we receive your word. And Lord, put your hand on Zulani's mouth and may we be blessed by what you have to say to us through him. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. I hope you had a lovely week, and you are fresh, and this morning, just to be able to hear from the Lord. And my prayer that it's not going to be me speaking to you, it will be God speaking through me to you, and that you will pay attention, not what I have to say, and it's not about for me to be glorified, but for Him to be glorified. And um, I've been sitting around this week and actually really praying for what to preach about. And a lot of us, we know that we are going through the series of hope. And uh, the series of hope, we've heard a lot about hope. I think last week we had Guanele was very fantastic of sharing about hope. And, um, and then I, I sit down and say, Lord... What do I have to say on this Sunday? And I've been preparing two messages, and one of those messages, I feel convinced. The Lord says to me, this message is not apart for the church. This message is apart for you, Zolani. 
I want you to actually leave this message before you deliver it to the church. And that topic, it was about the power of letting it go. And I was actually really wanted to come and say to the church, we must let it go so we can get hold of the hope of the things that are hindering us. And then we must let it go so we can just grab on the hope. But I'm very convinced the Lord says to me, it's, this message is not about for the congregation, but it's for you to deal with those things that you're going through. And it's hard sometimes when God speaks to you because you feel prepared <laughs> and you feel strong enough and say, this is the message that you want to share on Sunday. And God say, no, it's not about that. But as in this morning, as we're going to start my preaching, I felt really it's so good that we emphasize to give thanks to God for what he has done. And we prayed last time that as the church, nothing will happen. And, and, but in this time, there are few people that go back to God and to say thank you for what he has done. Because there's all the WhatsApp has been going around, but I just don't see any WhatsApp that is going around to say how thankful we are to God. We go with our request to God and asking him, but we don't come with the petition of saying, thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. I don't know how many of our life, as I'm raising the hope to you, that there's a time now where we have to go back to him and humble ourselves and say, thank you for what you have done. Because he's God. He does not need our help. It does not need our energies. He can do it all. He's there because he knows everything that is going on in our life. I don't know how many of you think that you can help God. <laughs> I think there's a lot of time where I think that I'm a superman. I can help God. And we've got it all because we are here to change the world. I wanted to let you know, God does not need your help. God needs you to be there with him. God needs you to be there to spend time so you can be able to shine the life of Jesus through the people that you come across with. Yesterday, I had the privilege of going down to Chasworth. And it was Sam and Rani, but Sam was turning 70. And I was thinking, 70? He's been in the race of going through, doing church, and he started actually planting the church at 19 years old. And I'm 34 years of actually been leading around. And when he, was, he started at 19 and he's 70 now, I think he's actually <laughs> done such something really, he's been through a lot. So when I look around and I say, I still got it what to take. If he's 70 and he's still loving Jesus and still serving as God called him at 19 years, we are still got a race to do as well. And I want to say to you, if you continue yourself as a citizen now, it's not over. God is still got for you what to take. You still got the potential to tell people about Jesus. For young people, we still got more to look at to those older people that run the same race again. And Alexander shared something that really touched me. He said there's only two people that he found in the Bible, and those people says it was Paul. He said, I have done uh, what I meant to do, and then I'm going to be with Jesus. And then he had Jesus himself and said, it's finished. I've done the work that my father has called me to do in this world. So I want to encourage you in this moment, the race is not yet done for us. We are here to run the race 
of what God has called us to do. We are here to still spread the love of Jesus to every people that we come across with. Amazing yesterday, praying for the boys. They're playing rugby at Glenwood. I'm praying for my son as well as I'm preaching right now. Because there were about three young guys going to hospital, had injuries and everything going on. They were hitting each other like mad. There was ambulances going. But it was great as well to be there and share the love of Jesus with everybody that they were there. Going to the ambulance and praying for those young boys. Going to the hospital. I was, I was there slowly and then I just pray that the protection over them, that they will never have a brain damage or anything. And there was a mom came and looked to me and, and asked me who you are. And I said, I'm Zolani. And said, what do you do? And I said, I'm, I'm just really <laughs> a pastor. But I always have an edging to pray for those people that are around with me. And then she looked at me with tears and said, thank you so much for praying for my son. And I want to encourage you, let's make use of the opportunity wherever we go to spread the gospel, to spread the love of Jesus, to bring hope for those people that looks like they do not have hope. And I want to say it with bravely again, I want to give thanks to God for what he has done in our life. We complain for many things that are not right, but we actually tend to forget what God has been doing. I want to say to you, to Sarepta, I'm actually tired of fighting and trying to do a church the way God, the way Zolan wants to do it. But I want to do the church the way God wants us to do it. I wanted to live the life the way Christ wants me to live like. And I wanted to be able to say it at the time when I'm done and when I'm dead, and then I don't want it to say that you've done this program, you've done this. I wanted the Lord to look to me and say, this is the beloved one, the one that I know of. Who I am, please with him. I'm not doing a church for all of you guys, but I'm doing it for one audience, Christ himself. We're doing it every time for many audience. And that's what I'm saying to our hope is not going to come into this audience around only, but our hope is going to come to him who's strengthening us, who's giving us the glory whenever we're facing the troubles. And when you guys are not around, there's a room where we go and cry to him and say, so Lord Jesus, we need, I need you in my life. I need you to change me. I need you to help me to walk as you walk. And I just want to encourage you, Sarepta. We want to welcome Jesus in this place. We want him not only on Sunday, but every day of our life. We will be the church and the people that will bring hope out to the hopeless out there. I'm talking about Stockville right now. God is calling us to pray for them. When you walk there, we have this intense some of them, they have hopeless. One came to me and said, thank you so much for opening up the doors to come here at the church where I can be able to know about Jesus, where I can be able to live my life. But the politicians and everyone that did not do it, it's us as the church that got the potential to do that. I want to say again, to us, all the people, we're the one that will bring hope to the younger generation. Those who've got grandchildren, I'm looking forward to have grandchildren. Sorry, Moshe, or anyone. But you're bringing hope of Jesus to your grandchildren. If you have a prodigal son that actually left away from Jesus Christ now, you are actually the one that will tell them about Jesus. The ministry does not begin out there. The ministry begins at home. And I want to say to us as well, let's never be the shame of the gospel because the gospel brings life. Let's never be the shame of the gospel. 
And let's never compromise it, church. And let's never sit and comfortable in our chairs and just do worship and live. And then we live the life that God never called us to be. Let's live the life of Christ. The anchor. The one who lives in us. And the one who said it, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. I encourage you to step up the faith now. The title of the message that I want to speak to you today is the way forward to hope. Pressing on to the way forward to hope. Where we know that hope is something that we not tangible, something that we do not see. And we actually say it as a church now. That why a lot of African people that I'm crying out to them, they're looking for the hope in the wrong things. They're going to Sangomas because they want something that is tangible. Something that can be the result. But we are serving a mighty God that actually knows what is ahead of us. Where we stand still and say that our faith does not come from the things that we touch. But our faith comes from him. Himself. It's so hard. We went to the school in Cabazela. And I saw a dead among these children around. My wife is doing an outreach to schools right now, going for vaccination. And then she came to me and said something that really touched me. They said, those children, they don't have hope. Those children, they actually living the life where you see, it's like it's dead. And I said to my wife, I thank God that you've put you there to be able to bring hope to them. My wife doesn't like the front situation. But I wanted to say, wherever you are, you are the hope of this nation. Whatever you do, you're the one that's bringing the light in the darkness. And whatever, when you bring in the light, there's always going to be a challenge. And I know that why I'm going through some difficulties for me to be endurance and be very excited that now I've actually touched the territory, which is a darkness. I'm bringing the light. There will be attack, but the attack, I know I'm standing firm that there is my Christ who lives in me. That will overcome and protect me. And I want to say to you, time is over of sitting in our comfortable zone. It's done. Let us, church, go back to our senses of loving Jesus. I don't know. I used to be a, a hectic evangelist. <laughs> Whoever I come across with, I used to tell them about Jesus. But I don't know what's going on to Zolani. This is me. How many of the people that you told them about Jesus this week? I don't do that much. But I just wanted to pray. Whenever we found a situation, whatever, we don't need to preach to them, but just telling them that Jesus loves you. A checkers, as I taught you one word in Zulu, when you say saubona, that means you're acknowledging someone. But I remember going to that person at checkers, and I say saubona, and, and then he looked at me, and then I said, I know you're not right. And said, yes, I'm not right. But I said, Jesus loves you. And I left. And that person, when I walked in, I don't know how did he realize about, he recognized my face. And said, thank you for giving me the assurance that Jesus loves me. I was about to kill myself. Because life is too hard. I'm working, but I don't see my money. I'm actually work long hours. My family is facing a, a tremendous, hectic stuff. But you said Jesus loves me, and that got me to understand there's still hope again. There's still hope. I want to say to you, I don't know how did I land it up there. <laughs> but I felt this is what God has to say to you. I was the hopeless person ever in holding my entire life. When I grew up, 
I grew up, never thought that I could stand in front of people and share the word of God. I never have any confidence in me. Even I've sensed the rejection when I grow up because I grew up with think that I'm not a normal person around the people that are around with me. I had Cliff Pilate, if you know. And that time, I did not have hope. I had so much rejection. I had a lot of people that I think the girls, they're the better people that I could play with them. Because girls, they had sympathy to what I don't know what's happening. But the boys used to reject me. They say, you can't play us because you are not the same with us. But I came to know that the way I am now, standing here, even speaking to you guys in the completely foreign language, in English, that I had to be able to go in my knees. I say, Lord, I can't do this, and I needed to know who am I in Christ. I needed to actually be able to bring hope that you have called me to be able to save your people. It's not about the language. It's not about myself and my identity. It's about him to be glorified. We are here because there is a purpose and there's a reason for us that we are here to transform for what God has called us to do. It's amazing. It blows me away. That there's just a boy that was being rejected by the community of Embo. But when I, I'm around there, I'm bringing hope to them. There is no sense of rejection anymore because I'm bringing hope of Christ in again. I try to run away. I try to do my own things. But now I'm standing again and said, you're sitting down in this chair. Maybe there's someone that is actually giving up in life. Maybe you are the person that could be able to stand firm and say, God is still Allah. God is Alpha and Omega. And he's still the same. I remember back in the time when we were doing the book of John, it strikes me in the beginning, there was God. There was a word. And that word was with God. And we are still living in that moment. Feel like saying amen and then leave. I looked around when I was in Glenwood yesterday, the sheep. In the sheep, there's something that holds the sheep, which is called an anchor. It's under the water. And there was a wind yesterday, and you see the sheep was moving around. And then it had the privilege to talk to my son because we were looking at the sea. And I said, you know what is holding that ship not to actually go anywhere? There's something under that we do not see. That is an anchor under that sea that is holding it so it could not see. But sometimes we tend to actually worry about other things and we wanted to see what is holding that but actually there's a wind blowing at that moment, but there's something that is under that is holding that we do not see. And I wanted to look at this time in this moment, hope it's something that we do not see, but it's doing an amazing job. Something that we could not touch it at that moment, but it's doing amazing. There's a wind blowing, there's a storm happening, but when we have hope, we could not see, but we know that our assurance is under there. It's still holding. It's still standing firm. That even when the wind is blowing it this way and blowing that, it's actually still planted under there and holding it again. And I said to my son, that's what it's holding. And that's what our faith should look like. I do not actually have to actually have a imagination of what is going on. I know my faith is somewhere there, holding. Let us read the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 19. And we've read that scriptures around. But one point that I want to emphasize 
God is anchored in his God's promises. And Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19 says this. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secured. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secured. Our body is crumbling. <laughs> Our soul is going through difficulties around. Our body is actually really tired. Some of us, we're thinking, how are we going to go through in life? But we still got a guarantee that we have hope in our soul in this mystery of going on. And I said to someone, my hope, even your body, your soul is not right, that I have a hope that if you are sick, you will be better in Jesus' name. That is hope that you don't see the healing happening right there at that moment, but you have a faith of knowing that God is going to do something in this soul that is in me that I will be better in Jesus' name. It's quite amazing of realizing that hope comes across to everything that we never tend to think of. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, I like the word being emphasized that, and we know, we know, we know. And sometimes I like, sometimes I, I don't feel like knowing this thing. But we know that in all things God works for the good for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. We know. I want to have the love of Jesus back again in my life. I wanted to fall in love as never and ever before again. Jesus, I love you. I want to fall with him as ever and ever. As you are, I want you to fall in love with Jesus. I can stand on this pulpit and try to preach about this word and trying to say everything, but if you don't dive in in this, this is where you're going to find the love of Jesus by yourself. It's not going to be just a few minutes of 30 minutes of preaching to you, but it's all going to take a role over you. And actually, I want to say to you, I don't know what I'm doing as a pastor. God knows what he's doing as a pastor. For me and for my role to lead this church, it's not about my own strength and my own ability. God knows what he's doing. God will build his church. God will build his people. And God will be able to strengthen you, not me. I don't know what I'm doing, but I know where I found the love of Jesus. Where I go. I have no idea. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now the faith is the confidence in what we hope for. An assurance about what we do not see. My goodness, I love the English word there. The assurance. There's something that you need to hang on. And I don't know how I'm explaining it. But I know when there's a word, the assurance, there's a sense of comfort for me that there is something that I should be assured of that gives me a capability of pressing forward and know that I do not see, but I know there's something that is there. I like Paul when he's mentioning that for something that we do not see. I want to pray through that we must not be the believers that we want to have the assurance because it's tangible. We are having assurance because we see it now. Can we be the believers that we actually look to him and say, I can see Christ in you. I can see the way you're living the life. That is the assurance that we're all going for. Mark chapter 11, verse 24 says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in my name, whatever you ask, 
For in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And this morning, we are praying with Anne at the pre-service. And I pause in a moment. I don't know how many of you have been praying for stuff. And, but we tend to forget to thank God for what he has done. We come up with a bucket list of what we want, but we don't come up with a bucket list of what God has done. I want to say to Sarepta Church, we've been praying for the kids zone. We want to give thanks for what God is doing up there. We've been praying for worship. We want to give thanks what God is doing. We are praying for a revival to happen in this place. It's assurance of something that we don't see, but we trust in God will be doing in this place. Praying, it's a key of hope. Praying is for something where we're going in our knees and trusting God to do life. I want to pray for young people as well. They've been challenged here. This is not a place to come and watch the movie and watch Pastor Zolani preaching. Listen, you've got participate what to take here, but get hold of Jesus in your life first. John Wimble said, everyone go to play. It's not about me, but it's about everyone. It's time as the congregation to be able to play around for us to be able to do what God has called us to do. Hope is strengthened by the community. I get courage with a lot of people as the community, as the neighbors, as everybody. Yesterday I was amongst the community. It doesn't mean that you only guys at Glenwood, someone's hope was strengthened because I was there. So I encourage you that we had needed to be the people that give hope to one another. I'm praying for the service that will be happening after our 12 o'clock for Guanele, where they're praying over the Passover, and they're using the same building around. It's because what are they desire? They wanted people to get to know Christ. But I'm giving them courage, and I'm giving them as a community, and lift them up in prayer so they can be able to stand and have hope as the community. This is not a game by yourself. Hope is for each other. We needed to encourage one another. We needed to be able to lift one another in prayers. We needed to support one another as God has called us to do. Romans chapter 15 verse 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy. I don't know how many of you are said. <laughs> when you have hope, you have joy. In this country we are living, there's a lot of people that are very grumpy and very sad. And they actually can't touch them. And want to say to you guys, if you are still angry with the taxi drivers, I want to pray to you afterwards. If you are mad with them, listen, I wanted to just smile and give them hope and pray a protection over that text in Jesus' name. Because that text has got about 15 family members that is feeding someone at home. They're coming from work. You are angry. You are two in the car and you are angry. Over 15 people around. Pray for that driver. How on earth? I'm very sorry. We need to give joy. We needed to look at the country. People talking about ESCOM. And I say to them, what a wonderful you've got an electricity minister now. Thank you, Jesus. There's hope. They were gossiping, but I was giving joy. I was exciting. When are they going to fix this road? Oh, thank you, Lord. I see they fix the few potholes. We give thanks to Jesus. I was excited. I was happy. And I bring hope to them when they're coming to destroy me. Because the enemy want to come and destroy and rob. And he had to come to give life. It's not about us so sad anymore. It's about us 
standing as believers in the situation when everybody's complaining and we bring hope. Give joy. Stop being grumpy. Love white people that complain as well. Stop complaining. Give some good joy. I stand there on the queue other time and check us. This lovely white lady, she was mourning around. She's like, what's going on? Why it takes so long here? Yeah, what is happening? And I looked at her around and said, Shem, the, the girl is having a hard time. Won't you have a sympathy towards her? Because we are living in the world where everything is rushing. We don't pause and give joy to others who need it. I encourage you to bring light wherever you go. To bring hope to the situation, the people who are hopeless. I walked to Pastor Leonard, old age home. They are all people that are very sad. But it was my joy at the time going down there. And I said, listen, I'm here that we can all have joy. It's not about sitting on that chair waiting to die. And there I saw a huge smile amongst them. Because I came to bring joy to them. And I said, we're going to dance, we're going to sing and say, Siabo nga Jesu, Siabo nga ngonyama Jesu. And they were very happy because we are not called in this world to sit down and just fold our hands and be miserable waiting for the coffin to go. Anyway, shocking for other guys. It's not a coffin. It's going to be a moment where you're going to be bent. <laughs> I said to Mpume, don't bend me. Just put me in the coffin and bury me at Embo. We need joy. We need to bring life. Hope is about action. James chapter 2 verse 26 says, As a body without the spirit, it is dead. So faith without deeds, it is dead. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things. This is through him. Who gives me strength? I can do all things. All things. Where does my strength come from? Through him. I can do all things. I have not been given a mandate of fear and the spirit of, I cannot do this, but I've been given a mandate of all things. But through him. My prayer every day as I'm about to land the plane, that if your jar is empty, you feel it running out. My prayer that this morning, that you may ask God to fill you up again. My prayer that the Holy Spirit will touch you and fill you again. Whatever I've said, if it's not from the Lord, I pray that you chuck it away, but whatever you had, that is from the Lord, it will inspire you and let you to draw closer to him. And that's why I'm standing here again. I cannot do anything as Jesus says that I will do what my father told me to do. And I wanted to say, and the prayer to start again, Lord, would you fill us again? Would you fill us to a level where we are actually pouring over to others? I had a picture as I'm landing that I've shared with the Connect group. On Thursday, the Connect group that I go through is very nice. We eat food. <laughs> Love the food. And I was dropping one girl to the airport and come back and they left me some food. Praise the Lord. Can you just say amen to that? <laughs> and and the Lord has been speaking through to me, even through the pictures. I had a picture, and I actually I had to be corrected about the word, but I'm not going to use this word because it's very difficult. The firewood, you know the firewoods, guys? You got that right? Firewood. What is it, Tim? A log. Say it louder. Oh. Oh, let me say A log. You know the firewood. You know that. Lock, yeah, firewood. Let's use the firewood. It's simple. <laughs> English is something. Firewood. Do you know firewood? 
Yeah, like you got a firewood, you want to start fire, you have that thing here. And then there's a word lock, I don't know what is it there. It, I can't pronounce that. <laughs> and I can, Mazulu people, ukuni, ukuni, ukuni. Mazulu people, kuni, I don't know what's in Shona, inkuni, you know that thing. Woody, woody, yeah, that thing. I had to bring out Mazulu now. It, it's, uh, in Africans, I don't know what is it called. Oh, yeah, what, 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 what. You know, you know, Jack, what is it called? The, the firewood? The hot. Yes. Yeah, praise the Lord. That, when the Lord showed me that picture, I felt like individual, they were carrying one. And we wanted to do the fire, but the problem, everyone, they were just bringing that, and there was a, a light of the man cheese, sort of, to put the fire. But I went and spoke to a few people. What is this picture all about? What I've saw? Someone says to me, a lot of us, we come up with that firewood to put one fire, but as soon as the fire has been lighted, we remove those woods. Because we want to do things for our own, but we don't want it to build big fire so for everybody to come around on that fire. To keep that fire burning, it needs each and everyone's wood to come across. So when the Lord himself lighting it up, it will shine so for everybody can come closer to that. What about in our South Africa because of the corruption now? People, they wanted to just to bring their own fire, even steal someone's fires as well. So they can light it up their own fire. But we are not called as the church to just come up with for your own. And then when it's lighting up, thank you so much, guys. I don't need you, Tim. I don't need you, Jack. I don't need you, Enoch. I'm taking it away because I had my wood got fire. But we are called to leave it there for others to come and sit around on that fire. Let the fire keep burning of the love of Jesus. Let the fire keep shining for those who are in the darkness. If you are the person that lost hope in reality of life, I want to pray with you that you will be full of Jesus again. If you have a sense of hopeless in your life, I don't want to pray that you do all this and do that. I just want to remember Moses. There was a dramatic happen. <laughs> And then there was a pen in bushes. He got to be in encounter with God. And I want us to repent again. We want to fall in the love of Jesus again. We want him to feel us. Can you please stand up? I read the conclusion here. It says, hope is not just a feeling or wish thinking. It is truth to trust in God's promises. To a faith even when we cannot see the way forward. To draw the strength from our community and to take action towards a better future. So, so let us choose to move forward in hope, knowing that God is with us. And that we trust in him, he will guide us towards the good works he has prepared for us to do. Amen. So if you are here, you're feeling you have a lack of hope, I want you to raise your hands up. Or if you're here, Jesus, I want to love you more as ever. Just put your hands up. Say, Jesus, I need to love you more. I want to fall in more in love with you as ever, as ever before. I'm raising my hands as well. I just want to love him more. Holy Spirit, would you come right now? This is not an act show. This is not just a, a performance. Would you feel us again in Jesus' name? Feel us. We want to feel more of you.
Lord, we want to love you as ever, as ever, as ever again. Would, would you remind us when we said yes to you before? Lord, we know that you said it in your word, we'll have difficulties, we'll have tribulation, we'll go through some issues, but Lord, we remember your love. Lord, we know this time of Easter coming up, you have shown us the love of Jesus that you have sent your son to die for each and every one of us. And we're not taking that for granted. So right now, I pray for these hands. And this week ahead, they will be full of loving you. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you. Guys, next week, we got a lovely Tim and Ingrid. They will be coming and preaching. We've got Alex held sin as well. And then probably you're not going to see me that much. But I encourage you to come for African Shopper if you are available. It's going to be very amazing. He's just an incredible author. And he really unpacks something that we are dealing with in this country. The ancestral worship, even going to school, it's hard. But we just needed to pray. And then the last thing I'm asking you guys, would we please... Would we please pray for the church that we don't close the doors for Jesus to be outside, but we'll welcome here in this place. There are many churches that close Jesus outside, but I want him to dwell among us. We'll be able to watch each other's feet as well. And I pray that our family, they will fall in love with Jesus as ever, as ever. Amen. And I bless you. Thank you.